Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How I Feel About Change Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation How I Feel About Change. Recorded on the 20th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, I, I've almost survived the day, which is wonderful. <laughs> so, I'm thankful about that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready to go, you're ready to go. Let me just introduce the topic first. What we're going to do in this, is in this uh, hour now that we have is to focus on the question how I feel about change and in particular we want to focus on the feelings that you f feel and we can maybe even talk about how to deal with some of those particular feelings that you have about change as well and where they came from. So fire away, Diane. <laughs> Down the front here. Oh, we've got, okay, you guys, no worries. Oh, gosh. I, I feel, at, you know, like currently, like change is such an effort and I want it to be easy as well. Yeah, the reason why change is an effort for anybody yeah. is because you're not processing emotion. Yeah, yep. and it's like I try and force force it on myself and yeah you're using willpower yep to force yourself into change yep and yep. then I've, i once i sort of realized how much i try and force myself to do a lot of things yep um i've started to have some real cries about that yeah that's good that's where you <laughs> and need to go because the the, the 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 compulsion which is an addiction to force yourself to change is actually an addiction in itself that needs to be processed emotionally. So you're on the right track with that. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. Yep. It's, a, it's a very important point you raise, though. Many of us are trying to use willpower to change rather than realising that change will be natural once we address four, the four primary issues that I listed on the board. Once we address those four primary issues, change is a natural process again. Just like change was a natural process when we were children. Right? And many of you are still trying to force change and if you can stop forcing change and allow yourself to feel how much you're forcing change, you will process some emotion. And this is a good start because it will get, it'll, it'll show you what the resistance to change is all about then. Yeah, so that, that's a very good thing to do, Diana. Um, Barbara, thanks. Um, I am realised recently that I'm resistive to personal truth so therefore I can't change yes I'm resistive to personal truth yes I, I feel you're resistive to more than personal truth though oh um, yes yeah. yes I agree yeah yeah um, can we talk we, we will talk a lot about truth in a couple of days time and a lot about the general resistances but um, I, I feel for the majority of you those four points that we raise the lack of faith the the lack of uh, desire to feel emotion and the lack of desire to act and the resistance to truth are all playing a part in the unwillingness to change. It's not like the major majority of you just don't have one of those problems. You have all four of those problems. Right? So, so this is going to create a huge impediment to, to change and growth for you. And, and unless you see these particular things as problems, at the moment you sort of almost see them as a good thing. You, you almost see like, you know, like for example, lack of faith. You, you see lack of faith as, well, that's normal. Everyone has lack of faith. So it's like, oh, I'm fitting in with the world when I have a lack of faith, right? When it comes to emotion, well, it's not good to show your emotion to everybody, you know. It's like, it's a bad thing. You know, people get stressed out by it and so forth. And, you know, you, it's un you, you give yourself a lot of reasoning, internal reasoning, to cause you to not take the, take the action necessary. And even with action, there's like, if I take the action, my life will change. And I don't really want my life to change. I'm really comfortable how it is. And, and the irony is many of you are comfortable in severe amounts of pain. Like what I would classify as severe amounts of pain you're comfortable with. 
Uh, that's a problem, right? You need to become sensitive to pain and then you won't be so comfortable with it. You, you, you'll want to change then, right? And, and the same, and, and truth I feel is almost the biggest thing. The, the, the amount of resistance to truth. <laughs> it's like, a, you know, for most people, it's like, I, I don't know how to describe it. This is why, you know, remember Sonia in the channeling with Mary, she, she mentioned the importance of truth to your future life. Without truth, no change, no growth, no love is going to be possible in your life. And yet most of you still believe you can love without truth. You do. You, you, you have a tendency to, to withhold information from even those very close to you, thinking that it's the most loving thing to do. And it's not. It's the most unloving thing to do. There is no love without truth, and yet the majority of you believe that if you're withholding truth, then it means that you're being more loving. Right? So, so these four issues are huge issues, and of course we'll be spending a lot more time on them to help you get to recognise what the problems are with those particular issues. Right. Yep. Um, who have we got here? If we go... If we go... Yeah, if we go to Pierre. You haven't said anything, Pierre, have you? Hi, Jesus. How are you doing? Um, I'm a bit like uh, Diana. Yes. Um, I feel really exhausted um, because I, I use all my willpower yes. and my intellectual ability to want to change. Yes. And I can kind of got more truths and more truths about the problem, yeah. but I'm so addicted to my facade yeah. and I get angry and yeah. I see it's wrong. So I go in self-punishment. So, so you're and in this I'm sort of cycle. Yes, and I see, I, I, I'm in the scenario of uh, go facing death. I, I can see if I yep. don't change, I'm in this. Yep. So, yeah, so oh. you, you feel like, for example, when you, get, you feel anger, then you think, oh, this is not very nice, I'm angry. So then you go into judgment, <laughs> right? And then you go, oh, this anger is no good, I've got to change. So now I'm going to force myself to change. Right? Using my willpower to do so. In other words, I just really force it, you know. The forcing, that makes me very, very sad, which I don't want to feel. <laughs> so I, of course, get angry again. Then I judge the anger again, right? When I say sad, it's not almost sad. It's like uh, it's like a sadness along with self attack, right? And spirit attack. Well, of course, if you're attacking yourself, then don't you think there's going to be a mountain of spirits who also want to attack you? You're doing it yourself, right? Like they they think, well, that's what you want. Might as well do that. Help help you along with that. Yeah. And it just keeps going around and around and around and around and around. And of course the end result is exhaustion. Right? That's the end result. Do you remember the channeling, um, who was it with? I, th I think it was with Glenn actually. Do you, do you remember that one that we did? There was those three spirits, um, Sarah, Mandy and Glenn? Yes. Yep. And the one we did with Glenn, he talked about how he went around in this cycle, 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 cycle for years and years and years. And then he, he just got so exhausted and he just lay there exhausted a lot of the time. Just, so you, but what you're basically going through is what he's gone through, which is great. You're doing it on earth instead of when he has done it in the spirit world, don't you think? Because he, he was doing it in the spirit world, so this is a good thing. But, but you need to let yourself connect with the actual grief rather than attacking yourself for having it. And you need to, accept, and you need to allow yourself to feel about what's really causing you to trigger, the, what, what causes the trigger of your anger, which is what you then judge. So, so the only way to remove a lot of these kind of problems, these circular problems, is to examine each part of the cycle that you're in. Do you follow me? Yes. 
Examine each part of the cycle you're in because each part of the cycle is triggered by a false belief that's out of harmony with love. You follow? So, so what I would do is I'd go, okay, my cycle is I get angry, then I get judgmental about it, then I try and force myself to change, and then I get, you know, and I also feel judgmental and self attack and whatever else, and, the, and I feel sad that I'm not progressing and so forth, and then I just want to, I just want to flop down and just, you know, not do anything. And, the, and by the way, even that state is a state that's out of harmony with love. All right? Now, what I would then do is examine my feelings about each state. What, what, why, why is it that I want those particular states? You follow? So, so what does judgment give me? It's a way to avoid my emotion yes, and my it's a, pain. It's a way to avoid taking action as it's well, isn't it? And taking action. Yeah, so it helps so me avoid addiction. a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. What does anger do for me? Uh, it gives me power and control on my fear. Okay. Uh, a huge so fear. It's a huge problem. So it helps me change. avoid fear. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. But there are also good anger in the sense that it, if you can fully connect with anger sometimes, and I'm not saying that you dump it on other people, but if you connect to your anger sometimes, it will help you find out what you're angry about. Does that make sense? So a lot of it is you judging anger so much that you're not allowing ang anger to be felt. So that's a problem. Now, what in your childhood happened that caused you to not allow anger to be felt? Because I, I got punished. I got punished. Yeah. Every time it you was, got angry. Yeah, it was not accepted. Yeah. yeah. So, so there is a childhood belief that needs to release, be released that, that, that this particular emotion should not be ever felt. So there's a belief there that needs to be released. So you could work on that. And then wh what causes you to revert to willpower? What, what's the feeling inside of you that causes you to embrace willpower rather than recognizing that actually the feeling is that you don't really want to do it? Why don't you let yourself feel you don't want to do it rather than feeling like you have to do it is the question I'm asking. Can you see there's some emotions there as well about that? See, a lot of times that, that is about things like it's not acceptable to do nothing, right? It's not acceptable to just sit here and feel about it. I have to take an action of some kind. Yeah, being busy. Yeah. I, I need to be busy. Yeah. 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 Where did that come from? My mother. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, so basically your desire to use willpower came from your mother, right? And that needs to be addressed. Like you need to let yourself not do something. You need to let yourself take the action of being still, <laughs> right? rather than having to always be busy. Right? And this self-attack, where does that come from? What, what's the underlying feeling? Oh, it's a to, to avoid punishment. From whom? From my mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so again, that shows you where you need to go. The fact is you need to recognise you were attacked by your mother, and every time you revert to self-attack, you're really just falling into the same pattern. Right? Now, the reason why nothing changes in these cyclic events is because we're not willing to address one or all of these particular things. So what we do is we skip from one to the next one to the next one to the next one, hoping there will be a resolution when actually the cycle is such that we're unwilling to address each one. So, so when we're in a cycle like this, what I find myself, if I'm ever in a cycle like this, is I examine each stage of my cycle, because each stage of my cycle is telling me the emotion that I don't want to feel about that particular stage of the cycle. You follow? And all I need to do is choose to feel that. So this is about feeling emotion. Right. Now obviously, this is a lack of love of self. This is a lack of love of self. This is a lack of love of self. Right, so you can see that if we're going to get God's f feelings of love about you know, what love is, while we're engaging a whole heap of uh, lack of love of self in the process, then God and myself are not meeting each other with regard to those particular concepts. And so it's going, I'm not accepting God's viewpoint of love there, I'm rejecting it. I'm engaging the well-trained concepts and ideas of my childhood with, with a refusal to address them. Do you follow? So recognize that. 
recognize that that's the cycle that's in. These are love of self issues, particularly those three, love of, all love of self issues, and, and this is telling me I'm refusing to love myself. And what, what's the main reason why we refuse to love ourselves? Do you know? It's because we want somebody else to love us first. So I, I, I'm very needy in this place. Yeah, you, you want uh, someone else to love yeah. you first. You want someone else to demonstrate love to you first. And, and most people do, to be honest. This is why you know, we do a lot of things uh, in order to get a love and approval from other people. right? And, and what God's trying to say to us is, look, every time you do that, when, they do give, when that person gives you love, they're not actually giving you love. They're just meeting your addiction. So it's not going to be love anyway. It's just going to harm you further. But not only that, you need to learn how, that to love yourself how I love you is the way God's feeling about you. So you need to come to learn to love yourself the way God loves you. right? And, and while you resist that process, you're going to get caught up in these very negative cycles. Right? So there is a direct refusal to learn to love yourself here. Right? Now, rather than punishing yourself for that, you've got to find out where it came from. And it always comes from some kind of original point, a cause that usually occurred well established within your childhood that you need to address. And as you correctly state, a lot of this comes from your mother, right? So there is a refusal to address the emotion of where this came from emotionally and as a result you get caught up in these cycles and this cycle will continue potentially forever yeah, unless I, I you break can, the cycle. Yeah, I, I, I see that and, and my, also my self-worth is just like getting lower and lower in this Your cycle. Self-worth? Self-worth, yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know if your self-worth can really get lower. Um, yeah. The reality yeah. is you, you're becoming more conscious of it through this process, obviously. The reality also is that your self-worth was well established quite low by the treatment of your mother. So, so that's where, again, you need to go. Remember, self-worth is not... You, you, you can't feel the feelings of lack of self-worth. You've got to feel where the lack of self-worth came from. And remember what I said to Josh earlier, lack of self-worth comes from how you get treated. And you need to come face to face with how you get treated. Right? And this is where most of, uh, most of you refuse to go there because that involves other people and how they treated you. And many times those other people you still want to maintain a relationship with. And so, and so what you do is you distance yourself from their treatment of you and uh, unfortunately, it causes you to retain the worth situation. It causes you to retain the lack of worth. The only way to work through the lack of worth is to come to face the truth about how you've been treated. Yeah, I've been doing false processing exactly this, this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's easier to access self-deception emotion than the real hurt it is yes and yeah i've not been in when you say hurt. easier um preferable well again uh, you've got to be careful because these are just addictions um, it's, uh, it, it's actually easier to process the real emotion because then you don't have the results anymore <laughs> so obviously that's the easiest thing to do but but because of our avoidance of pain right and our avoidance to the sensitivity of pain, we, we get into these cycles. So, so um, the best thing I can say is that surrender to pain and, and actually grieving it, grieving the pain, is, is going to do wonders for you. <laughs> right? And to do wonders for most people, actually. Uh, but most people avoid the surrender to the pain. They want to fight it, fight it, fight it, use their will to overcome it and so forth. And it just creates these never-ending cycles that go on for years and years. And by the way, they don't just end when you're on Earth. You know, after you die, they continue. And, and you don't want that, right? You, you want, as you heard from Glenn, he went through these cycles for many years, even after he'd passed, right? So, so don't think that it's going to stop after you pass. It's not. It has to stop through choice. 
and, and choice, the use of your will, has to be more in harmony with love of self. And to be harmonious with love of self, you've got to find the original causes of these particular emotions that you're projecting at yourself. And the majority of them is in order for you to become more approved of by women. Right? And you, you just don't want to feel how, how you're not approved by women. Right, and work through those particular emotions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pierre. Um, if we go to Fab down the front here. Thanks. And Jane, you had your hand up too, didn't you? Yep. And then we'll go back up to Jane, so maybe the other mic can go across to her. I was, I was looking at the way that you um, analysed the control. I mean you know, the change that earlier, how you learnt from God, yeah, you know, you got your source from the higher source of love. Yeah. Then I was thinking about Alan's analogy of the buildings. And I look at that and I was like, it's like Jenga, you know, like the game. No. Yeah, You've never, never played Jenga before? No. Oh, it's building blocks and you pull the bottom one out. You pull it oh, right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And I looked at it as like, well, it's a bit like that for me with, with God. Is like I have some stable blocks on the bottom, but I keep pulling out you know, the world's definition of what changes and what all that stuff from the middle and build this unstable building on top of it. Right. And I, and I struggle with that because I feel like I, I, I go into judgment and self-attack because of a lot of fear that I have about change. You know, like I, I have a feeling that I, I like it and at the same time I have a fear of certain areas of change. Yeah, but I think, I think a lot of times people's questions are their answers, actually, and, and in your case, that's the case. Okay. You're, you're really afraid of what people think of you. Yeah. And, and that is a huge problem on the planet, Fab. It's like the majority of people who don't change are the result of their lack of change is because they're too afraid of what everybody else is going to think of them. It's like they say, grow up, you know, why are you changing all the time? You know, you've got to stop changing all the time, be an adult. And yeah, like I said, I, I feel... I feel that parents are happy for a child to change until such a point where the change is too far digressed from the parent's ideal. Then the parents start shutting the child down. And so, do, so does society. Society also shuts the child down. When, once the child changes too much from the societal norm, then, then it needs to be shut down. So there are certain areas where you're allowed change, and then there are certain areas where, where you're not allowed change. And, but, but these all come from fears about other people, fears about what other people do to you, how they feel about you, and so forth. And, and these are obviously related to how your family of origin feels about you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so worried about it. Mm. Um, so, so, again, it sort of goes back to many of those kind of emotions about how do your family of origin feel about you? How do you feel they feel about you? Yeah. What do, you know, what... What do they really feel, think about Fab the person? And as a result, you're afraid to take any action that will be outside of their norm. And this, of course, then means that it's easy to spirit influence you as well, yeah. to, to take actions that are in societal norms. Yeah. And I do feel like sometimes I do take these actions and, and you then do? I just get completely attacked. And then I think that's because I'm open to it, though. Well, all, all attack occurs for a reason, whether it's spirit-based attack or people on earth attacking you. Uh, it, it all occurs for reasons. The key is to find the underlying reason. Now, in your, in your case, these particular spirits and people who attack you know that you'll conform to their behaviour again, to their requirements of you again, after their attack. They, they, they are guaranteed of it because that's been your past behaviour. So... so so the reason why they attack you is they know it's going to work, you see. Yeah. They know it's going to work. And, th and, that's, uh, and that's the issue you face is that you, we, we often get attacked because the people who are attacking us think or know that it's going to work. And it means that we're going to reconform. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what we need to learn under those circumstances is an issue of love of self for a start, but also love of, of God's truth and love of, of universal law. And that is that it doesn't matter what somebody is going to do to me, I am going to stick by my use of my will as I've decided to use it in harmony with love. No matter what's going to happen to me, that's going to be my, my, my life. And, and once you enter that state, it's very rare for you to get attacked, in fact. I do that on some topics, like I, I know I have. On some? 
on some, but and then you know, and then sometimes but stuff to do relationship, finances, and a number of other issues. You don't. No. 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 So. Yep. Mm. So you know, at some point, confront those fears is necessary, but but the primary fear is the fear of being attacked, mm. right? And you've been attacked quite intensely at different times, but not yet allowed yourself to feel it emotionally. Right, you remember back in the beginning, you know, a few years ago with this media attack of you and so forth. Um, in fact, besides myself and Mary, you were probably one of the persons attacked the most, right? Um, but not processing through it emotionally. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I was a bit like what Eloise said. I feel like I took a little onion layer off. In bits yeah, and I, I feel so. You certainly had some improvement right. after you dealt with some of the feelings, but it's still not dealt with. Otherwise, you wouldn't well, be conforming it, so. again. You yeah. see. Yeah. When we conform back to our previous life, it's always because we're just afraid. The reason why we're, we we're not changing is because we're afraid of how other people will view this change. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's a big issue in the world. It's like, it's like you've been taught, every, every person's been taught from a young age, if you change beyond your family norm, what your family will allow you to change, and if you change beyond that, you're out of line. Right? And, and in fact, we've been taught that out of line means not only you know, being pulled back into line through some manipulation emotionally, but, but for the majority of people on this planet, out of line means that life and death issue. In the sense that people are willing to kill you for being out of line. Right? And this is where courage is required for a person who wants to practice, who wants to get, become at one with God. The hardest thing is having courage without having the relationship completed. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, what, they, what I mean by that is that, is that you know, once you're at one with God, having courage is much easier. <laughs> right? But having courage between when you're not at one with God and at one with God, that period of time where you're still getting attacked, you're still getting abused, you're still not at one with God, you're still not experiencing the full happiness of that relationship, that's the hardest time. And everybody around you knows that. All the spirits know it, all the people know it. They know the time of opportunity for them to change you is right when you decide to change. Do you get that? That's what they know. They know that that's the best time to attack you. If you're established in your change, you've got momentum, you've got you know, courage and momentum, you're going to be hard to shift. But if, if somebody can change you just while you're beginning to change, if they can pull you back into line just while you're beginning to change, they'll have good success at that point. So when attack of myself increases, I see it as a good thing. It means that they believe they have an opportunity to change me back to an original position that they want me to have. And I know that the action I'm taking must be triggering that uh, response by them. So that means the action I'm taking is a good action. I need to continue it. Right. Yep. But most of us don't do it, look at it that way. What most of us do is we go, oh, I'm getting attacked now, life's not smooth now, what do I do? Oh, you know, and we get, we get pushed off our game, as the saying goes. You know? Yeah. Yep. So that's what I feel needs to happen for yourself. You're getting pushed off your game. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and, and there's some emotions, sure, that are causing you to be pushed off your game. Mm. The key is to feel what they are at that time that that it happens yeah because quite often i hear you express yourself and you go oh, i really want to do this and i really want to do that and i really want to do this um, but a lot of that doesn't come to to any fruitage you know it doesn't come about because you you're you're worried about how laura and others and and family and others and society even generally will respond to these desires that you have that you really want to engage yeah yeah, and, uh, and, and there's a lot of fear there in that. So the key is to let yourself process through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we went up to Janie. It was amazing for me to listen to your interview with Glenn from yep. the spirit world because you told him that he had caused so much harm by being alone and yep. being a loner. Yeah, I can't remember that, but go on. Oh, okay. That's yep. the, the most important thing I remember from it because um, that's what I've done all my life. Yes. I've cut myself off and... Um, 
Do you it, see why, why it causes harm? Um, not so much that, because on, on top of what Glenn's done, I, I get the feeling that he was quite a nice person, but on top of what he's done, I've caused harm in so much, many more huge ways mm -hmm. um, that I'm just becoming aware of in about the last 10 months. It's all become you yep. know, a bit more obvious to me. And then yep. listening to Glenn, that was, that was really helpful. Why, do, why am I causing harm by being alone? You're not you, see see the, a person who loves themselves and loves other people shares themselves with other people. I share myself with my good friends and always have, but I'm, you know, I keep it restricted. Yeah, when you when you say that, um, you're you're alone, are you not? You yes. live alone. Yes. Yeah. Always have. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something so well, fearful and, and in And remember the conversation people. with Glenn as to why he lived alone? He, uh, he realised after he passed why he lived alone. No, can you remind me? Yeah, he was afraid of the opposite gender. Well, I'm just afraid of people. Uh, you're mm -hmm. afraid also of the opposite gender. Um, the, you, are, you are afraid of people, but yeah. it's not just that. You're afra also afraid of the opposite gender. I have a lot of rage towards men. Yeah. From childhood, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he did with women, right? Remember? That's from his mother. From I his mother, was, right? Yeah. His mother was oppressive and so forth. So this is where you need to go. Family of origin uh, again. And, and the refusal to go there is because you believe that your life as it is now is the most comfortable it can be. Oh, no, I don't, AJ. It's no, supremely do. uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I but, tell you. No, but you believe it's the most comfortable it could be. Which is different than it being supremely uncomfortable. I agree, you believe it's uncomfortable, yes. but you believe it's still the most comfortable it could be. You don't believe that there's any better way of doing it. I've started to believe lately, I've started to have a little bit of excitement. Well, that's good. <laughs> Instead but. of just being in, um, in self-punishment and self-attack, I've started to... That's that shift feels as though it's shifted a little bit. It could be just na nature's natural love spirits influencing me. I don't know. Well, honestly, it depends on how fast you want to be happy. Really fast. <laughs> no, you don't. No, no I don't. No, no you I'm don't because the proof is of your life. That's yeah. the proof of how fast you want to be happy. But what you were just speaking about um, just before was um, that if you make the the, if you have the will to make the change that the spirit attack lessens because the, you know you're on the brink of something no I didn't say that I think I said it increases didn't I mm. yes yes but yes that's true but um what I've found is that I just have to be determined to not be as negative and critical in my thinking as I had been. Right, so you need and to use your willpower. Things. Yeah. Yeah. But remember Mary saying if you use your willpower, it harms the soul? Uh, of course it does harm your soul. You're being pretty hard on yourself when you use your willpower. Yeah. But I just can't continue to harm people with my negative thoughts anymore. I just I agree. Can't do it. But there's another solution to feel the fear of people. Well, no, because it's not about the fear of people. It's anger with, with somebody. Go back to your childhood is what I'm saying. It's anger with somebody. Who is it with? Mum, dad, my brothers, everybody. <laughs> exactly. Go back to your childhood and feel the anger. The, the anger you have in your childhood is the result of you wanting... And, and as a result, you've distanced yourself from society. You've distanced yourself from your other half. And you've distanced yourself from life generally. Yep. You have a few select friends that you associate with. And aside from that, but you don't spend a whole lot of time with them. And, and, and so you spend a lot of your time alone. Yep. And then you say your life is unhappy. But the reality is it's driven by these emotions from your childhood yes. that you're unwilling to process. Yes. You follow? Yes. Yep. And because you're unwilling to process them, you're going to continue having the same life. Yes. Uh, there's no, the, no change is not possible here. You say you want it, 
but it's not possible until you're willing to go back and actually feel this real anger you have in your childhood yes. with mum and dad and why that anger was occurring. And, and what you've chosen to do as a result of that anger is to distance yourself from people. Yes. To protect yourself. Yes? Yes. Which is an indication you've got a lot of sadness that you are completely unwilling to feel. Well, I thought I had been, but I think I'm just... No, you're feeling yeah, being alone and you're feeling, you, you see what I'm saying? You're feeling being alone, yeah. you're feeling the effects of the emotion, not the causes. And I thought I was allowed to have nothing, but I've seen lately that I've been... You're allowed to, sorry? I thought that I was allowed to have nothing, that was my, what was going on. And you're allowed to have nothing, yes. did you say? But the truth is that I've deliberately stopped myself from having anything. Oh, I agree, I agree, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Ajit. It's a deliberate choice. Yeah. 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 And this is see, this is what we don't realize a lot of the time, is that we're we're not receiving God's love because we're refusing to love ourselves, right? And God's going, no, no, no. Hang on a sec. I love you, and to be at one with me, you've got to love you too. And and you're going, no, but I don't want. I want you to love me without me loving me. <laughs> That's what we do, right? We can't do that. You see, God's trying to teach us the lessons in love. It's an education in love that God's giving us. He's going, trying to teach us these lessons in love. The lessons in love here are very much about, firstly, love of self, the fact that you've distanced yourself from society and from people in order to prevent yourself from feeling emotion. You're addicted to it. You're addicted to not feeling specific emotions. Absolutely. And the way in which you avoid feeling these emotions is by withdrawing from the world. And the other way I, I do it is by um, mentally criticising others, judging others, so that I don't have to feel my own emotion. Oh, I agree, but, but you know, to me that's like part and parcel of the choices that you're making. And this is where it comes down to the use of your will. Yeah. If you continue to make the same choice, you're going to keep getting the same result. You said earlier you want your result to be different, and I'm saying to you, no, you don't at this stage. Right. want your result to be different because you don't want to address the emotion that causes the result to be the same. There is motivation now though in that if I... No, no I, I feel there's a growing awareness which I would call at this stage intellectual yeah. growing awareness of what is causing your pain yeah. but there's still a very strong emotional avoidance of that pain. Yes, of course. Yeah, which is where, where you need to go. What I find lately, AJ, is when I criticise somebody else, I immediately feel the pain of it. Yeah, which is great. That's the way it should be, isn't it? So, big motivation. <laughs> yeah, that no, is very good. It's very good that you, you do something that's unloving and you feel the pain of it. That means your sensitivity to, to the compensatory effects of your own behaviour is improving. So that's, a, that's an indication of an improvement in my mind. Thank you. Yep. Okay, um, if we go across to page, uh, just over there. <coughs> AJ, I'm wondering if a similar thing's happening with me. Like in the last six months particularly, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in constant pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware that I've got major fear of change. Mm -hmm. Major fear of taking action. Mm -hmm. Law of attractions ramping up, mm -hmm. bringing me all of these opportunities, particularly with work, because that's where I'm interacting with people more. Mm -hmm. To step up and to start to actually address these issues, mm -hmm. and I'm just like frozen most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than answering your question sort of directly, yeah. um, can I explain what generally is happening for many of you with regard to the way in which you're treating your lives? Right. Yep, thanks. Um, Let's draw three scales. Pain scale, desire scale, and a fear scale. You could say the desire scale is, you could also call it your, 
will, isn't it? The exercise of your soul-based will. All right. So you've got these three scales, pain, desire and fear. What generally happens with most people? Their fear is pretty high, right? For most people, fear is pretty high. As a result, what's happened to your desire? It's pretty low, right? Because it's manipulated by your fear. It's governed by how much fear you have, right? And what, as a result, where's your pain level? High, high right? So it's up here somewhere. So, so that's generally how we're living our lives, and somewhere along those particular positions. And you see, to change that process, I've got to change the way I feel about certain things, don't I? I'm going to have to change how I feel about pain. I'm going to change, have to change how I feel about fear. Right? And I'm also going to have to change how I feel about desire or the exercise of my will. Right. Now, when will I do something about it, do you think? Right, so th th this is a terrible thing, isn't it? We wait until our pain is like a number 11 on the 10 scale. But, and then we go, now I'm in extreme pain, so maybe I better address this particular problem. And that's where I'm getting to. That's where you're getting like, to, right? I can't put up with it anymore. But every time you go to address it, what happens? The, the fear kicks the in. The fear kicks in and it makes you... Just not take any action at yeah, all. Yeah, immovable. Yeah. Immovable. So, so what is that? What, what, what's happening there? You're, saying, you're basically saying, even though I've got all this pain, it's still not worth me feeling the feeling of fear. Now, most women on the planet are in this state. I, mean, I feel, feel all women on the planet are in this state, actually. It's still not worth me addressing the issue of fear. So this is a desire to... A, a, a terrible, terrible feelings that you have about fear as an emotion. Right? It, it doesn't really, really even matter what you're afraid of. <laughs> Because for each of you, it's different fears, you know, like might be a fear of losing your family, fear of using your friends, fear of, fear of people attacking you, fear of getting raped or hurt or abused in some way. All sorts of fears, right? Yep. It doesn't really matter what the fear is. Most of you are just afraid of feeling, the feeling of it. Right? That's the problem. Uh, afraid of feeling the emotion of fear. The emotion of terror, if I could put it that way. Right? And as a result, there needs to be more and more and more pain that you create <laughs> through the choices and actions you take to avoid your fear. You finish up creating more pain, and then pain intensifies, pain intensifies. And you know what? After a while, the pain turns into another thing. Suffering occurs when you've ignored your pain for such a long period of time that it has now turned into suffering where you're willing to suffer the pain. You're willing to put up with this high, intense amount of pain, whether it be emotional, physical or both. Usually it's both. right? And you're willing to put up with it for long periods of time. You're willing to even die with it, like die with a cancer or die, you know, die, with, die with a disease that is immense amount of suffering rather than address Fear. So is it just my refusal to feel the fear that, that is then creating my inability to act? Of course. Like in, in the last week, for example, yeah. th there was an opportunity to address something yeah. and I didn't. And you don't. Yeah. And immediately I just, it just hit me. Yeah. Like, damn, I've just missed an opportunity. I'm now aching like a hundredfold more than I was before. Yeah. And then the opportunity presents itself again, and again to address and again and, and the again. fear kicks in yep and i don't sleep and i feel like vomiting and it's yep. going through my head is it okay what am i going to say how am i going to address this you know yep. without bringing without on actually doing potential it. attack 
and then I'm there with the person and it's still kicking in. I'm like, am I going to say something? Am I going to say something? And then... And there's opportunities even in conversation yes, that come yes. up. Yes, and then I'm and, like praying and, for an opportunity for it to come up so I can address it. Well, you're it. obviously not praying for the opportunity if you're not taking them, but well, somebody else is trying to give you I the opportunity. I actually did once last week and it yeah. just it was totally not what I expected. Yeah. And it was... Awesome. And we well, this is really the thing about fear, you see, most of it is false expectations appearing real. You know, it is, you know, what you believe will happen rather than what actually will happen. And the reality is if you bring yourself into harmony with more of God's laws, the way you deal with your life, then a lot of what you're afraid of happening won't even happen. But, but you've got to work through your fear to get to that place. Emotionally, you've got to feel it and then still act. And what I see most of you doing with fear is you feel it, a bit of it, and then it causes you to live in it or not act. And you can't change that way. You can't change. Now, so, while that happens, you won't even know how to use your will. Do you know, you know what I said to Mary a few weeks ago? I said, most people I see on this planet have no idea about the use of their soul-based will because their only way they're using their will is to live in their fear. Fear becomes your God, literally, and it also becomes the only way in which you use your will. So you're very good at using your will in this direction to avoid the feeling of fear. You're very good at that. That's a problem. You need, to, you need to get rid of how good you are at that and instead use your will to, to actually feel your fear rather than act upon it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's killing all of my desires. Of course it will. Uh, the, more, the, more this, uh, the more you honour this fear, the more it becomes your will, your only, your only choice is to avoid fear, avoid fear, avoid fear, avoid fear. Avoid fear. That becomes your only choice. That becomes your God. That's the only thing you will choose to do. No other thing will happen while you do that. It's a very important thing to learn. Now, the only thing that destroys fear is... Truth. Truth. So it's indicating there is a refusal to accept that if you follow things and do things in harmony with God's principles and laws of love, that actually you will have a better life and a less afraid one as well. There's a refusal to accept that particular truth. Yep. Right? Yeah, I don't trust it. So basically, like, honouring fear is one of the major reasons why, if you examine all of those things we said earlier about change and your feelings about change, most of them were fears, were they not? Yep. Fear is the primary reason why we avoid change. Right? Every time you feel immove, immovable, every time you feel locked up, even every time you feel like you can't act, you can't express yourself properly, it's all usually because of honouring fear. It's not fear that's the problem. It's the fact that you honour it too much. You, 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 you treat it like God, as a God. You bow down to it and worship it. You do whatever it dictates. You follow? I think yeah, I've confused and not understood that, that the fear can be there, <coughs> but you can still act with the fear. And that's what I've That's the only way you before. can get through fear most of the time, actually, Paige. Yeah, because it brings it up more. Yeah. And it, it's, it's taking the action you're afraid of taking, even though you know you should take it. So, so what I do is I look at, okay, is this action in harmony with God's love? Yes. Is it in harmony with God's truth? Yes. So it's an action I must take even though I'm terrified of doing it. Right? And all I have to do is take the action and feel the terror. That's all I have to do. You follow? Yep. But if I refuse to take the action, I'm living in the terror. Once I'm living in the terror, my desire will be suppressed. It will be squashed. My pain will increase. It's all very negative after that. Right? If, I, if I act, 
I will have this intense feeling of terror or whatever it is that, that I need to feel with regard to my fear on, on whatever subject it is. It might be sexual terror, so, you know, shame, which is also a, a fear-based emotion, guilt, another fear-based emotion. It could be all sorts of emotions you'll feel by still acting. So, so, for example, you know you shouldn't feed somebody's addiction, but you decide to do it anyway. You're only doing it out of fear. If you know you shouldn't do it, but you're doing it anyway, you're only doing it out of fear. Right? Now, that's not going to help them change, but, it's, and, but even more importantly for you, it's not going to help you change. Because every time you do that, you're acceding to the fear. Your pain will increase. Right? And when is the pain enough? Well, obviously, many of you haven't even worked out that question yet. When is the pain enough? Right? Like when, when I look at the world and I see the pain of the world, I go, gee whiz, you, you look at what we've been doing as a society uh, generationally, over generation after generation. We've been practicing the world's view of love for millennia, thousands of years now. We've been practicing the world's view of love. Look at the results. Does it work? No. Now, if we were any if we had any logic whatsoever, we'd be going, well, maybe we've got to change this, wouldn't we? If we had any logic whatsoever, and this is the same with this situation for you ladies, if you had any logic whatsoever, you'd be changing this, right? And it doesn't just apply to ladies, but, but fear is a big problem emotion for women, just like sadness is a big problem emotion for men. Men don't want to feel sadness. Women don't want to feel fear. Many of you ladies compromise yourself sexually, emotionally, physically in order to avoid fear. Whether that be fear of yourself, other people's perception of you, fear of what might happen to you in society, or fear generally of how people are, 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 you know, how you appear before people, because you know that if people are start attacking you, you don't feel like you have the strength to resist those particular attacks so you use your fear and justify to yourself living in it in order to avoid it not understanding that actually all of god's laws are trying to help you remove it and that's the way to become happy yeah. so so fear is a primary problem with regard to change right and whenever you hit it, the best course of action, like I said, is to analyse your what you were thinking of doing. Is it in harmony with love? Is it in harmony with truth? If the answer to those two questions are yes and yes, you must do it. It doesn't matter. There's no other consideration. You must do it. If you want to grow in love and you want to actually be more educated in love and even receive more of God's love, you must do it. But even if you just want to be a more loving person, you must do it. Because in the doing of it, you will confront some of the fear that is causing you to not want to do it. Right? And that's how you release fear, by taking action. Right? Taking action on the truth. You, you will release fear automatically. If you allow yourself to feel the emotion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I want just to straight in front of you, Paige. A dilemma I, I have is uh, I'll go to the supermarket and I'll see people treating their children really badly mm -hmm. and um, immediately anger comes up at me and then I get fear and, but I also am afraid of con confronting them because I'm not loving being loving myself if you know what I mean because I've just been angry mm -hmm. and upset about it mm -hmm. so I, I don't know what you do in that situation where you know they're horrible to their children. Mm. Is God letting it happen? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Why is that interesting? He's not getting angry. No, no. Why is it interesting that God lets it happen? Why doesn't God come and smite the person? Because they've got free will. <laughs> Sorry? They've got free will. They today. have. But if you're in a position where you can see it's wrong and you know the truth is that it's unloving. Is it ha it's not happening to you? 
No. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's unloving, yes? Yes. Don't you think God knows it's unloving? So I don't so I shouldn't say anything, I should just No, I'm not my... saying. I'm saying why is it that God see these are questions you need to ask yourself. Why is it God is not acting? God's got the power to act. Why isn't God acting on that in that regard? There's two two primary reasons why God's not acting. Well, they've got free will and there are laws that Whose laws? God's laws that will affect them. Right, they've got free will. Mm -hmm. Does that mean like you've got free will? Does it mean you can go murdering people? No. No, it does, doesn't it? You can well, murder people, yes, can't you? I'm not going to. <laughs> You're not going to, but you can. Mm. Yeah. So you can choose to murder people. Yeah. Right? So, yes, there is this aspect of free will, but that's is that why God's not acting? There's another reason why God's not acting. Would anyone like to have a guess? Like why that might be, if we Eloisa maybe? Just Eloisa, yep, thanks. Is God giving us an opportunity to act? Ah. What why why is God giving us an opportunity to act? Who so who created this family that allows the abuse of children? If it was me, I did. It is, no, isn't it society? You think about it. You think about abuse of children. It's intergenerational. With all is it, accepted, is it, it unlawful to hit a child? In some countries. Oh, it is in some countries, but not here, is it? No. No. And in fact, in most Christian countries, it certainly is not unlawful to hit a child, is it? No. Is it unlawful to hit an adult? Yes. Huh? Well, it depends. It is, isn't it? It's unlawful to hit an adult in most countries. But it's not unlawful to hit a child. Why is that? Because we're hypocrites. Because? We're hypocrites. Sorry? We're hypocrites and we have one rule for <laughs> well, they're, 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 That's the underlying result. But, but why, isn't it? There's, there's got to be... A, 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 it's, it's called parenting. But why is it called parenting? Why? Why? If we, um, there's only one mic, so I still want to keep the mic with Alan. I think it was Alan. Um, if we come down to Ange. Yeah. Because we all allow it. Well, basically, a society approves of it. Why do we approve of it? Well, why do we Straight behind you, yeah. Rob, straight behind you. It's the false beliefs that we've been taught, that it's discipline, it's controlling, it's teaching your children how to behave, yeah. all those sorts of things. Which um, all of us tend to believe even though we say we don't. Yeah. Yeah. How, how frustrated do you get when you're trying to convince a child to do something and smacking is a, a not an option? Uh, you think about your parenting when you're a parent, <laughs> those of you who've been a parent, smacking, if macking is not an option, how frustrating your life becomes in terms of controlling your children. Most of the time, they're just reflecting your own unhealed behaviour, are they not? Yep. So, so what does this tell us? An action where a child is getting harmed in a public supermarket is the law of attraction of every single person who's present in that market. You follow? That is demonstrating that there are all, every one of those people have a problem with this particular event. That's how the law of attraction works. When we go through understanding God's laws, we hopefully will give you a bit more of a better understanding about the law of attraction and how it works. So as a, as a result, this event is a law of attraction event created partially by your own soul. And in fact, the anger inside of your own soul is, in your case, what's going to get triggered. Now, can you correct a person while you're angry? Of course you can't. Right? So, so, so you cannot, in this case, take an action until you've corrected the anger as a response within yourself. Do you follow me? Once you've done that, you will know exactly what to do in this regard to help that particular parent and child in, a, in an attitude of love. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you're not going to do it while the anger is inside of you. Mm. You need to address that. Mm. But that applies to every single person who observes this particular event in the supermarket. Mm. 
right, which there might be 10, 15, 20 people observing the event. Mm. Every single one of those has a problem with that particular event. Right. They have something that they need to address within that event. Mm. Do you follow? Yes. Now, now, the correct course of action is if we were all feeling our own emotions and everything, including the parents who were involved in this particular action, then it wouldn't have occurred in the first place. Mm. Right? right? Now, God knows all of that. And that's what God's trying to help. He's trying to help all of us come to terms with, firstly, the emotion that's with inside of us that this poor little child's getting harmed by a parent who's just a big bully and, and who feels their life's out of control or whatever it is, other reasons they have for doing such a thing. And they need to, you know, those emotions in all the people present need to be addressed. Now, the average person doesn't address them, do they? Like, when you walked out, did you connect with why you're angry? Well, um, did you, did anybody else do it? No, <laughs> probably not, right? And 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 also, you know, what comes up in me is, um, you know, I was a teacher for many years, and and I look back and see how terribly children were treated by me in that system. You know, like really terrible. So again, I feel I have no. Um, yeah, but see, anything. see that then guilt is motivating you. Yeah, you see. So feel about how you talk. You know, this is one of this is one of the attractions of the event. Mm. So feel about how you've done that to children and so forth. Mm. Feel about why you're angry about it as well. Work your way through those particular emotions. When the event happens again, you'll be able to lovingly go up to the parent and and deal with the child as well. You will, even if that meant uh, eventually the child was taken away from the parent. Used to be able to lovingly do it, right? But, but if you're angry and you're resistive to those underlying emotions and you're resistive to your own guilt and you're resistive to your own shame about what happened in the past when you treated children in a similar manner, not the same perhaps, but a similar manner, then, then of course there's no opportunity for change. Right? So, so all of these events are, like, are governed firstly by the will of the individuals involved the parent obviously wants to smack its own or belt its own child. But secondly, by the attraction trying to bring about some law-based change in every single person who has observed the situation. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, in, um, I think it was 2000, and, uh, I don't know, probably uh, nine or something like that. We were in Melbourne. I think it was 2009. Um, and, I, and somebody asked me about something that happened in the news, which was a, a rape of an elderly woman. And uh, I went through the law of attraction and what was actually occurring in, in the cases of each individual. My suggestion to you is to understand that. Mm. Because it all gets back down to emotions that we are pr preferring to not feel ourselves. Yep. Mm. Now, of course, once you've felt those things, Taking action is the best thing to do, but you'll know what action to take once yeah. you're in that state. Because you'll be in a state of um, knowing what love is and what truth is. And yeah. 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 Okay. And I'd suggest to you the fact that you're not taking action is an indication that you already know you're not in that state. I do, I do, that's, <laughs> that was my original dilemma. You know, once you I know, know you're that. in the state, you would take action anyway. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, it's uh, past our finish time now. So we've had a day of focusing on those two subjects, primarily of how you feel about love and how you feel about change. What I would like to ask you to do, we're going to give you some homework tomorrow afternoon on these subjects, but I'd like uh, to ask you to contemplate um, a couple of things tonight if you can. One is this. If I examine the last five years of my life, has anything in my life really substantially changed? Now, don't think swapping one thing for another thing is change. I'm talking about real change where, where you know you've had a major shift and it's now not hard for you to be more loving in a certain area. Does that make sense? Ask yourself that question. Unless you learn to measure yourself, remember in our first assistance groups in 2014, we said to you, unless you understand how to measure yourself, you will not make progress. You will not.
So you need to learn how to measure yourself without judgment. Without judgment. Has it changed? Has it not changed? You need to know. You're, it's your life. You need to know. You, know. you shouldn't need to ask anybody else whether your life's changed. You would already know. If you were connected with your life, you would already know whether your life's changed or not. And you'd, you'd not be fooling yourself. You'd be dead accurate with that. So that's what I'd like you to do. The second thing I'd like to ask you about is to reflect upon your resistance to feeling specific emotions relating to love and change. And how you have a tendency to blame God for things that God is not responsible for. I'd like you to reflect upon how you... Um, now I've forgotten them myself. <laughs> oh yes, the particular emotions relating to love and change and how you have a tendency to blame God for things that God has never done. <coughs> to you or anyone else. <laughs> Okay, now tomorrow, just as a brief summary, tomorrow there will be a talk in the morning with some Q&A straight after it. Then we'll be having a personal uh, feedback session for a half an hour and a group feedback session for a half an hour. And those two sessions, I know some of you have already written your stuff up the back. If you haven't got around to doing that yet, please do that on the appropriate one for the session tomorrow. And I'll be grabbing that uh, tonight and again uh, in our break tomorrow just to check out who we'll select and make a selection as to it'll probably be only one or two people that we'll be able to give some feedback to at that point and we'll also give you some group feedback and then tomorrow uh, afternoon right at the end of the session we're going to be summarizing the last couple the day and a half that we've done and and giving you some homework does that sound all right and uh, we've already worked out the homework we want to give you so so that'll be happening tomorrow afternoon Good day. Tomorrow, by the way, starts 11 rather than 10.30. Yep. Just put them out the back for me and I'll pick them up. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, guys.